still in the middle of renovations, as you can see from my background. That's why I missed last week's video. I am doing another part of the sex education video today, which I don't think a lot of you are interested in. If you're not interested in this, I'm not going to do the rest of the segments because I don't want to bore you all. But please let me know in the comments down below what you think. I do want to say thank you so much for everybody who has taken my survey. I told you I would be thanking everybody all the time if people are taking it. And so I am doing just that. It does mean a lot to me. I know the survey is long and it's just so nice to have that support. I really, really appreciate it. It's really needed. It'll be a very good uh, tool to have in the future for screening large traumatic events. So thank you. And as far as the video for this week goes, as I said, it's just another segment from uh, the sex education in the Netherlands. I hope you enjoy it. Now on to five and six year olds. Now this is group two and their lesson one is boys and girls and they are becoming aware of the physical differences between boys and girls. Okay, so I'm guessing the first one, who am I, isn't about the actual physical differences now. Okay, so this is starting to make a little bit more sense as we move on in the curriculum. So I guess now is the possible physical differences, meaning the genital differences between males and females. Also learn that boys and girls are equal, which is really good to start early on. To think and learn about the gender stereotypical behavior of boys and girls in the media. I don't know if this is just learning about it so that they are aware that this is the standard in which society has pushed upon genders or to say, okay, this is what, what goes on, but you can be whoever you'd like to be. I'm guessing it's more the second one, just knowing how the Netherlands is, is that, hey, these are the norms that society has given genders, but this isn't necessarily how you have to be. I am maybe thinking a little bit too positively on a lot of this stuff and not very negative because I do think that the curriculum has the best intentions and therefore I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. But if you know otherwise, again, please correct me in the comments so that I can revisit this topic and explain what maybe some children are actually learning, what the actual material of the curriculum is. Lesson two, how do little children get born? Oh, pregnancy. Pregnancy is a good thing to cover for sure. Where do babies come from? That's a very common question. They will learn more about pregnancies and the birth of a baby. Know how a baby comes into a belly of a parent. So they will learn that sex occurs. I wonder if they only learn about the traditional conception or if they also learn about possibly doing infertility treatments. I, I know you might say they're five and six year olds, they're very young, but again, you can possibly explain it a lot more um, basic. I, I don't know, I don't have the actual material. I know I keep saying that, but some people in the comments down below might want to make it out like I am an expert and I am not. I just have the outline. But I do think learning about where babies come from is important. I do feel very hesitant about them teaching how the baby gets in the belly, but I understand that that's important. I don't know how they explain it. Children obviously have already from this curriculum learned that there are different types of families. So I wonder if they go into adoption at all or surrogacy. Again, you may say these are very large topics to be giving to five and six year olds, not denying it. But again, maybe they have a good way of explaining it. And that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, so after pregnancy, five and six year olds will learn we are friends. What this is all about is gaining insight into the meaning and importance of friendship and friendship relations. And also know that they can forge a friendship with children who are different from them. And that's lovely. I remember growing up and not saying this doesn't happen here either, even after learning this, but being friends with boys as a girl, was definitely not cool. Being friends with somebody that wasn't the same social class as you wasn't cool. You know, like it was always about being with your group, <laughs> being with the people that are like you, that are similar to you, and not thinking about the inclusivity of people that were different. So I think this is really good. Hopefully it does cultivate 
a environment where everybody can feel included. I don't know if it does. I am hoping that the teaching of all of that will help when the children become teenagers and they start to separate out a little bit more. Just understanding that I think is important. Lesson four for five and six year olds is what feels nice and what doesn't. There are a lot of topics about touching, which I think is good. Too often, I think, all of us as adults that maybe did not get enough education about touching except a lot of touches that we don't want whether they are relatively new neutral like a hand on the shoulder that can also escalate to being more accepting of sexual touches as well just because we don't really learn a lot about boundaries you may say that is overreaching or over exaggerating i don't think it is i think we get accustomed to allowing things to happen and we just slowly get desensitized to that. It just slowly starts to go up from there because those feelings that tell us we don't want this and we want it to stop, we've diminished so much that we just are disconnected from that part and we just keep allowing things to happen, unfortunately, because that's what we were taught to do from a young age. Anyway, let's get back to the lesson at hand, which is what feels nice and what doesn't. What the children will learn is the insight to concerning pleasant and less pleasant touches. Also aware that everyone has their own wishes and boundaries. Ooh, boundaries are good to learn. Learn how to respect boundaries and wishes in different situations, yes. And be aware that what you like or dislike differs per situation and per person. That is fantastic. Yes, sometimes you feel okay with this, sometimes you don't, and that's okay. I'm really glad that is taught. Hallelujah, it is taught. I'm so happy about that. And I do think the younger you start teaching about touches and boundaries and all of that, the easier it becomes to stand up to say, no, I don't want to be touched that way. Also, the easier it becomes for people to accept that there are going to be boundaries that you should not cross and you need to accept that and you don't need to try and force them to move their boundaries for you. Rather, need to respect them and be okay that they're there. And if they change, that is fine. You don't need to be mean if somebody changes their mind about their boundaries. Yeah, I wanna do that right now. Oh no, 30 minutes later, actually, I'm not feeling this, I wanna stop. That is perfectly fine and I'm really glad that they're teaching that at five and six when you really are starting to learn self-control. That is fantastic. Five and six year olds should be able to tell you, yes, I'm okay with a hug. No, I'm not okay with a hug. Yes, I'm okay with the, the kisses on the cheeks. No, I'm not okay with the kisses on the cheeks. Hey, I'm not comfortable talking about this. I don't wanna talk about this anymore. I, you know, I need my space. Even things like that, I think, hopefully they cover all of that, not just physical stuff, but also more of that emotional space for boundaries as well. I'm totally on board with this part of definitely talking about boundaries and wishes. And I know it does say pleasant and unpleasant touches, so I'm guessing they do touch on the physical stuff a lot. But again, I'm also hoping besides the physical, they are also talking about emotional boundaries too. Lesson five, how to say no. Yes, again, another fantastic thing. No is a great thing to really understand. I. I know some adults may get very annoyed when their small child tells them no when you're like, but this is good for you. But when it comes to this context, no, I think is very important. Ignoring the fact that your child doesn't want to hug and making them give hugs to people is very wrong, I think. It's teaching them that it's okay for people to force their wants on you, even if you don't want it. You want them to hug them, that's your want. You're forcing it on them and you're telling them it's okay when it's your body and you don't feel comfortable and you don't want to. So yes, I'm very glad that they're talking about no. And hopefully the parents are respecting this and trying to also instill the teachings of this lesson. What they are learning specifically is knowing that they can refuse to be touched in an unpleasant way or fashion. They know who to ask for help if it occurs. Learn to say no in different ways. That's fantastic because sometimes telling family members or a friend no can be very difficult because you don't want to hurt their feelings. So learning different ways to say no is great. And they learn to listen when others tell them no. That is also really good. If you have the right to say no, that means you also need to respect when other people say no. And I think this is a fantastic fantastic part so that they understand that their no is not a veto to somebody else's no. And that is it for group two. So um, that is fantastic. I think overall it's really good. Again, just a little bit curious about how they teach how the baby gets in the mommy's belly. That one 
kind of was like, I don't know about that. Thank you for watching this segment of the sex education reaction video that I made. I hope that you will let me know if you enjoyed it or not so I know if I should continue showing the other segments. Until next time, I hope you stay happy, healthy, and stay educated, y'all. Bye.